There's a new test out there for actually a couple of new tests, one for cardiovascular disease and another for kidney disease. ABMA and SDMA, they stand for asymmetric dimethylarginine and symmetric dimethylarginine. If you go to the, uh, to the Cleveland Heart Labs um, site, you'll, you can get a printout of um, what they mean, uh, the significance, description, interpretations. Even physicians uh, can get uh, information on how to code for it and how to bill for it. So, <clears throat> but the question is, um, does it work? We'll talk about that for a minute, but first a quick introduction. Ford Brewer, uh, Dr. Brewer with PrevMed, heart attack, stroke, cancer prevention, disability prevention, dementia prevention. Sounds like we're preventing a lot of stuff, but <clears throat> the reality is um, there's some basic key drivers for, for all of these. Uh, cardiovascular inflammation, three quarters of that, which is uh, driven by diabetes and insulin resistance. So we do a lot of work in that area. Uh, ADMA and SDMA. First of all, what is it? <clears throat> um, <clears throat> the bottom line is that it's a comp uh, ADMA is a competitor of NOS, nitric oxide synthetase. Now, why is that a big deal? Well, <clears throat> Remember, nitric oxide is a major uh, protector of vascular uh, lining, the endothelium. So, <clears throat> uh, if you start with a common uh, amino acid uh, and a couple of other things, like a common uh, NADH, a common methylator within the uh, the reduction oxidation system or the cellular metabol uh, metabolism. You take these two and uh, they compete for space on the nitric oxide synthetase molecule. If, if um, actually the product is citrulline and if citrulline is being made using these uh, base components, then the idea is that uh, nitrous oxide is not being made. Now, <clears throat> so that's a little bit of the biochemistry. Here's another way of looking at it, a little bit simpler, easier. Um, L-arginine and ADMA lead to citrulline and compete again with um, the production of nitrous oxide. If you get increase of this, you're supposed to get atherosclerosis, hypertension, diabetes, uh, chronic, you know, all the stuff that comes along with atherosclerosis. Now, <clears throat> if you go back to that Cleveland Heart Lab, um, here's what they're saying in terms of this is the significance. They're slightly different. Elevated ADMA is uh, endothelial dysfunction. Well, as we just saw, anything that decreases nitrous oxide production is going to create endothelial dysfunction. They're also saying prediabetes and diabetes, again, goes along with that, uh, with that type of metabolism. Um, <clears throat> subclinical cardiovascular disease, again, all part of that iceberg of uh, prediabetes, uh, atherosclerosis. Elevated SDMA can uh, be, a, according to them, can be a, uh, a tip-off to early kidney disease. The reality uh, is that it's, it seems to be pretty well proven in dogs and cats, at least for SD, SDMA and kidney disease. And their point, the point is that SDMA, SDMA is a much earlier indicator of chronic kidney disease. The current, one of the current um, indicators we have right now is uh, creatinine. And creatinine, admittedly, is not a great, 
a great indicator. You have to have fairly significant disease um, before you start getting reliable uh, information with creatinine. Although we use it in, on a practical basis, you need to have more than, than barely significant disease in order to have clinical significance. So you can argue both sides of whether or not we need something more uh, better or earlier than, uh, than creatinine. Again, just a repeat of that same, um, that same point. Uh, See, needing to see maybe up to 75% of kidney function loss to get significant creatinine changes and um, as little as 25% decrease in kidney function to show changes in SDMA. Now, <clears throat> are there uh, groups, standards bodies that are using this? Well, there is one for um, IRIS is looking at kidney disease in animals, and they clearly use it, SDMA. But what about humans? Um, <clears throat> actually, the the uh, there's debate over that. Um, you look at a a meta analysis like this one, and they're basically saying yes, we do get some information but it's not quite ready for prime time. It needs more, you need more confirmation. Um, the, part of the problem does appear that uh, when you look at diabetic populations or pre-diabetic populations, there are significant variations in uh, these kidney functions and the other, uh, other components of health of these uh, populations. That variation does tend seem to be washing out um, the reliability of the indicator with ADMA and SDMA. However, let's look at the other side of the debate. Um, this group, looking at humans, is saying, "Look, we are getting a predictive value of a positive test, so it is worthwhile." So, bottom line: Do we use it? Uh, we usually use it occasionally. Um, I know that Doug Thompson has added it to the to the screening program for the Wellness Dentistry Network, so we see it a lot with uh, with those programs. Uh, would I criticize it or thump it? No, I don't. Um, am I basing a diagnosis on it? No, I'm just saying. Look, we have if we have positive results with ADMA and SDMA, we do have some uh, potential issues regarding that uh, cardiovascular diabetic. Um, and uh, kidney disease endothelial function axis, so we need to look deeper. Thank you for your attention.